My first interest in science was chemistry, but I did my PhD in physics, master's in psychology of ayahuasca users. Now I am studying for my second PhD in religious studies about ayahuasca, of course. And University of Santo Daime has been an important part of my life for more than seven years. I will speak today about what is in the cup or chemical composition of ayahuasca and its substitutes. So what is ayahuasca? The most simple and common answer is that it is a brew made from two Amazonian plants, Banisteriopsis copy and Psyhotria viridis. And psychoactive effect comes from their interaction. From my experience in Feiti or ritual cooking of the sacrament Santo Daime, I know that we can have one big pile of the wine, jagube, one big pile of the leaves, hainia, and out of those only two plant materials, water, fire, and knowledge, is made six or seven different kinds of the sacrament, ayahuasca, daimi, that are different in their color, taste, overall strength, and also qualitative effects. So I wanted to find out what are the chemical correlates of those differences. In addition of those two most widespread plant constituents of ayahuasca, there are many other plants that get traditionally added to ayahuasca to study properties of those plants, to modify the effects, to cure specific diseases in many different traditions plants that get added. But there is also less traditional way of uh, additives to ayahuasca, so-called analogs, that are used to replace the main constituents because they are either easier to access uh, or easier to brew or just cheaper. Uh, they could be plants with medicinal psychoactive properties of their own, or even chemicals. So, before I did my study in chemistry, I did some fieldwork, interviews, participant observation. This picture is from Netherlands, from the time when Santo Daime was legal there. And then I did some chemical analysis of ayahuasca samples with help of Institute of Chemistry of University of Campinas in Brazil with under uh, mm, supervision of Professor Alessandra Sussolini. I collected 102 samples of ayahuasca from different countries in Europe, from Brazil, and different traditions like Santo Daime, Shamanic, Neo Shamanic, one from UDB, Psychonauts, and determined concentrations of the main four ingredients DMT, harmalin, harmin, tetrahydroharmin by high performance liquid chromatography plus mass spectrometry. This is the crew at the lab Professor Toffoli, Professor Alessandro Sussolini, Rita Souza with me, and Flavia Zandonati. And the device we used. From the results, we wrote an article. I hope it will be published soon. And answer to my question about different degrees or graphs of daimi came out pretty much as expected. 
the priorities of Daimi that are known to be stronger within the tradition had indeed higher concentrations of the active components, but also the ratios of co components were different, as you can see. So yes, there are systematic differences between those degrees of Daimi, and this deserves further study. Comparing different traditions in terms of what's in their cups, the red circles are shamanic brews. On the axis we see there were four main components and I want to image it on two-dimensional plane. So I divided concentration of DMT by harmine, by harmine and tetrahydrohormine by harmine and got this distribution. Each dot is a sample. The red ones are for, from shamanic traditions with different tribes and they lie more or less nicely along one line. The blue crosses are daimi. They are scattered around the same line, more or less, with a slight increase towards DMT, concentration of DMT. And those green circles are neoshamanic brews that show even more inclination of, towards increased concentrations of DMT. First 39 samples were also qualitatively tested for additives and contaminants, like non-traditional constituents, components, and we found some use of analog plants, mimosa, peganum harmala, from samples corrected from Europe. Um, as I was there at those ceremonies and talked to the organizers, uh, the participants were not like proactively informed about it, but if I asked what is there, usually I got the answer, yes, I added another sacred plant from Syria or, or Mimosa Jurema with its own spirit. Uh, among those 39 samples, in three samples was confirmed presence of either Mimosa or Pegonum harmala or both, and one was suspected for harmala because uh, we can see or guess addition of pegonum harmala from increased concentration of harmalin or increased ratio of harmalin over harmine. But there is no like specific molecule, at least we didn't use such a specific marker. As for mimosa, there is uramamine, a specific molecule that shows that mimosa is there in the brew. The worst result I got was counterfeit ayahuasca. Ayahuasca with almost no wine that actually doesn't deserve to be called ayahuasca. Those two related samples contained almost no wine, but it was psychoactive. It contained a pharmaceutical monoamine oxidase inhibitor antidepressant, moclobemid or aurorix, as monoamine oxidase inhibitor. It contained psilocin, at least one lab found it, another lab in Campinas confirmed. There was high concentrations of DMT, from mimosa because there was a uramamine. And in one of those samples, we couldn't find any traces of harmine, harmaline, or tetrahydroharmine. And in another, there was a microdose quantity of them, like one fifteenth of average of other samples of the wine alkaloids. So, sad to say, but fake ayahuasca is out there. Now 
counterfeits, additives, contaminants, or analogs were found among ayahuasca samples I had from Brazil, from any Brazilian traditions, or in samples from Santo Daime ceremonies from Europe. The cooking of the sacrament, fechillo, is a community ritual, and there is virtually no way of somebody putting some pills or chemicals or other plants into the kettle, unless it could be an act of diversion. And in Brazil, where Santo Dami sacrament is made, there is an abundance of those plants, Churches grow their own. There is no good reason to put in anything else. So as conclusions, we recommend for ayahuasca users open inquiry and awareness about the constituents of the used brew, especially when those ceremonies are held outside Southern America and its spiritual traditions. It should be like a, a normal activity to ask, what is the medicine made from? Because in countries where it's illegal, those ceremonies are often announced, not as ayahuasca ceremonies, but light circles, medicine, tea, grandmother, queen of the forest, or something like that. So nobody actually promised you ayahuasca. And if you don't ask, you don't get to know what's inside it. We call ayahuasca a medicine. If we buy some medicine from a drugstore, there is written on the package what's inside of it, how many milligrams of moclobemide or other additional substances. I guess Ayahuasca as a medicine deserves the same precision, the same respect as our usual medicines. So it should be nothing to be ashamed of to ask the organizer, what's in my cup? It is not a display of mistrust or if you feel uncomfortable to ask, what is this that I'm gonna to put in my body to influence my mind and spirit, it's not a good sign. Ethical, disciplined, non-commercial community practices of ayahuasca use, like ayahuasca religions originating from Brazil, should be protected, not persecuted. Because if we forbid those uh, good, disciplined traditions, of ayahuasca use. People will use ayahuasca in ways, and then they will go to another organizer who will give whatever psychonaut cocktails. People will use ayahuasca in ways, and if we shut down decent possibilities, people will use other possibilities. We need to develop an evidence-based legal regulation and ethical self-regulation in collaboration between responsible practitioners and users of ayahuasca. So, how many of you believe that we deserve to know what is in our cup? Please raise your hand. I see. <laughs> Then let's work towards it. Thank you. And I also want to thank uh, support from European Union Regional Development Fund, who funded my travel here and my travel for wheeled work and collecting of the samples, Kalava Travel for Travel Stipend. And of course, my lovely crew in Unicampi, University of Campinas. I don't have this mass spectrometer at home, so I used their kindness, lab, and knowledge to do this work. Thank you.